Hey everybody, how's it going? So I'm pretty excited about this video. I've been wanting to, for a while, make a video explaining Japanese or pole saws, the ones that I use and recommend, and just kind of share some of the knowledge that I've learned over the years of using these things, kind of some information that I wish I would have stumbled upon early on in my woodworking career. And I also want to say this video is sponsored by Suzanne, which is a Japanese saw manufacturer. They reached out to me about eight months ago and sent me a full line of their, their saws. And I told them, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll absolutely check them out. And if they're as good or better than what I'm currently using, then I'd love to work with you. And so uh, we've been working together. And one of the things that I'm really excited about is after going through their saws, I said, hey, I really would like if you would build me a saw. I think your lineup is missing a really crucial saw. And if you could make that, it would be absolutely awesome. So they took my recommendations and they built this saw, which is now available for production. And it's a sweet, sweet dovetail saw. They have some saws in their lineup that can be used for dovetail work, but they're cross cut teeth orientation. So they're a lot slower. It's just not the right saw for the job. Their one saw that does have a fine rip tooth is really short. It's a seven inch one with a short handle. The handle's kind of thick. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the plastic and rubber. And so I basically told them, hey, can you take this blade, make it deeper, make it that nine and a half inches, put it on a full natural handle like your other Dazuki saw and it's gonna be sweet. And so they ran with it, made the saw, and I'm really excited, really proud to have helped bring this to the table. And I'm gonna show you all these saws and why you might want them. And I'm gonna show you the recommendation of what I think you should have in your toolbox to basically do anything you want. So we'll just start from left to right here. The first two saws and any saw that has a rigid back is called a Dazuki saw. And basically it just means a rigid back saw. Now they can be cross cut or rip cut orientation they can be different sizes but you have these Dazuki saws that have this rigid back because you can put a super thin blade on there and this back helps provide some strength and some rigidity so that saw works. Now Japanese saws or pull saws, they cut in the pull stroke, which lets you get away with a super, super thin blade to begin with because that blade's intention as it's cutting, you're pulling towards it. And that's the main difference, one of the main differences between Western saws. Uh, I guess I could talk about that real quick too. Western saws, they cut on the push stroke. And some of the cons that I think in Western saws, and I have a bunch of Western saws, I love them. They're really, really nice tools themselves, but they're way more expensive. A good Western saw, a dovetail saw, might be two to $300. And the kerf is bigger on them, not by a whole lot, and really it's not that big of a deal. As long as you're cutting to the waist side, it doesn't really matter if your kerf is, you know, an eighth of an inch or microscopic like some of these. As long as you're controlled, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. They're also more difficult to tune and a Western saw is a saw that you don't really throw away the blade and replace the blade. It's something that's a lifelong investment, that single blade. So you need to learn how to sharpen it. You need a saw vise, and there's kind of a lot more detailed learning and a bunch of stuff that goes into Western saws. The thing that I really like about Japanese saws, or these pull saws, is that, you know, they're super cheap to start off. When I started off woodworking, that's why I got into these, is because I didn't have a lot of money. Each one of these saws is 40 to $50, and they are incredibly accurate, incredibly sharp, sweet, sweet tools for the price. I, in all of woodworking, I think Japanese saws are the best bargain. The quality and the level of their cut is super good and they're just really affordable. Okay, so going back to the saw lineup here. The first saw is this Dazuki saw that has a really fine rip cut and makes it awesome for dovetails, for small tenons, cutting the cheeks off of tenons. Those are rip cuts and you want rip tooth orientation to get through your work quicker. And I'll show you, I'll do a demonstration later on sawing with a really fine rip cut and a really fine cross cut and how big of a difference it makes. Now you can use these rip cut blades for cross cutting operations and they're about as fast as a cross cut blade, but they will leave a little bit rougher of a 
surface and you'll kind of get a little bit of tear out on the face as you pull that saw through the wood. So these two right here are, and I'll just say it right now, awesome must have saws in your toolbox. So you have a really fine cross cut and a really fine rip cut and together almost all your joinery, fine stuff, you know, dovetails, smaller work, these two saws are just dynamite together. And I just love them. And so like 90% of my sm mid to smaller stuff, I'll be using those. Anything where I'm doing through Morris and Tenons, dovetails, I have those two out. And kind of one cool thing about Suzanne that I really like, I didn't even think about it at first, is that each one of their saws has kind of a different handle wrap situation going on. And you can see this has a gray back and this has a black back. Well, it makes it really easy to know which saw you're grabbing. Um, other manufacturers, all the components look the same. And so you actually gotta like, kind of get really close to see, is that one a cross cut? Because the blade shape is the same. It's just the rip cut has a chisel point and the cross cut have grinds in it to make them like a knife point. So I kind of really like that feature. Then the next saw, these are called Ryoba saws. So they have a rip cut on one side and a cross cut on the other. And I use this thing a ton. So anytime I'm doing larger woodworking, uh, like tables, anything mid to big, this is basically both saws. You know, you can cut your tenons, the cheeks on your tenons with the rip cut or larger dovetails even. You can even cut fine dovetails with these as long as you're kind of careful. Um, the blade on this is still super, super thin. It's just a little more aggressive, so it goes through the wood a little bit quicker. You gotta be careful coming down to your line. Uh, it's just a great saw to have. So in, in a nutshell, real quick, the th these three right here, your Ryoba and your two Dazukis are basically the kit to have. Now, if you wanna add some pieces later on, there is this next Dazuki saw, which is really, really sweet little saw. It's the finest crosscut saw I've ever seen. The, the blade is just so thin, paper thin, and it cuts like butter. So if you're into things like Kumiko, which is the decorative Japanese pieces that you can put like on a drawer front or I don't know, all sorts of things, just really beautiful. Um, this is an awesome saw. It's just kind of cool to have. It's, it's definitely not necessary up front. I would take this one, the larger one over this, but this is a super, super cool saw to have and to add to your kit for really fine stuff. And this is called the Kataba saw. And it's basically a Ryoba, but without two blades. And it has either cross cut or rip cut. And they're a little bit more aggressive than what's on this Ryoba saw. So for dedicated breaking down material to length, or ripping stuff, the Catawba is kind of a nice saw to have. But I would, again, take the Ryoba over that. Kind of something you might add later on if you're doing a lot of ripping stuff down, cutting stuff down to length. Which traditionally, I like to use my power tools for that kind of work. I like to rip stuff down on the table saw, cross cut it on the miter saw or the table saw sled, just to get done with that kind of work and get to the fun stuff, which is cutting the joinery by hand. And if you're a carpenter, if you ever do any kind of construction work, this is, I would say, a must-have. You're really missing out on a lot of versatility and speeding up your job if you don't have a Ryoba saw in your construction trade toolbox. It's basically the same blade, just a little bit thinner. And it's really nice because it folds up and there's a little sleeve that goes on this end so that you don't damage it in your uh, toolbox. But if you're a carpenter, a framer, finish, Carpenter, this is an absolute must. And again, this is the dovetail saw that they had in their kit, in their lineup, that it's just a smaller blade, so seven inches compared to um, nine and a half, or this might be eight inches compared to nine and a half and a shorter handle. So if you want a little smaller, sh shorter saw, um, you might want to check this one out. And then another must have, I should have included it over here, if you're doing a lot of traditional woodworking, I do a lot of drawboard mortise and tendons and things, is this awesome little flush cut saw. You know, a flush cut saw, and this is essentially a Ryoba saw because it has cross cut and rip on it. And there's no set to the teeth. So the teeth aren't offset to each side a little bit to widen the curve so your saw doesn't bind. It's meant to be able to put flush on a piece of work and saw off a exposed wedge or a dowel that's sticking through or just whatever kind of piece of wood that's 
proud of your surface and it won't mar up your surface. These are just awesome to have. So that's basically the lineup in front of us here. I'm gonna take you in, show you a little bit about the cuts, the grinds of the teeth and why a rip cut works so well for certain things and why a cross cut works. I think when you see kind of the close ups, you kind of get an understand my little fun example over here. So up top here is on these Japanese saws, is an illustration of what a rip tooth looks like. And these are each individually like a little chisel point. It's a square flat chisel point and it scrapes along the wood when you're cutting into the grain with the grain. So when you think about wood fibers, and this is my little illustration here, my little uh, demo, you have wood fibers, which are kind of like a bunch of little mini straws. And when you're cutting with the grain, all those fibers, if you're using a knife point, which is kind of what a cross cut tooth orientation is, it's kind of like a sharp knife, which is meant for severing across the grain. The knife point will just kind of split those fibers and they'll just kind of come back together and heal. Now you definitely can cut that way. Um, it does work, but it's a lot slower and less efficient. So if you think about a knife tip going into the fibers, it kind of just wants to split those and it's real slow, it doesn't cut super fast compared to using a knife tip across the grain, it's gonna cut much faster. And that's the same with table saws and other blades. A table saw that you're using to rip a lot of boards, you're gonna want a rip blade in there and those rip blades on table saw blades, same thing, they have chisel points on their teeth. They're square and they scrape away into the grain and they do a much more efficient job of cutting and it leaves you a smoother cut as well. Now, if you're cross cutting like over on your miter saw station, those blades have kind of knife points. Sometimes there's hybrids where it'll have a knife point and then a chisel tooth in the middle and then a knife point on the other side and it kind of cuts or it'll be knife right side, left side. It'll cut each edge and then it'll have a chisel in the middle that scoops out that kind of severed section there. And so, for doing things like cutting dovetails, you're cutting into the grain, you want a saw that has fine rip tooth orientation. And if you're cutting the shoulders of tenons, you wanna be using cross cut. Or if you're cutting boards down to final length or length, you wanna use a cross cut. It just works a lot faster. Actually cutting across the grain with a rip tooth, a fine rip tooth, like on Japanese saws, it actually is about as fast as a cross cut. It just tears out a little bit on the side that's towards you. It's a little more rough. It's not as fine as the rip cut or as fine as the cross cut. Now, when you're cutting with the grain, it's night and day difference how much faster rip teeth are compared to cross cut teeth. And so next I'll go over and we'll, we'll demonstrate that. We'll look at some of these saws. I'll bring you in really, really close to show you and uh, we'll measure the number of strokes and things and you'll see really quickly why a rip cut is what you want for most of your fine joinery like dovetails and things like that. All right, let's do some uh, demos here. We'll start with uh, these two guys. And this is kind of what some people use for dovetails or rip cutting. I'm gonna do 10 strokes in this three quarter inch oak, white oak here. Um, I'm just gonna Saw like I normally would, not any kind of extra pressure or anything like that. So here we go, 10 strokes. Okay, so you kind of hear that. It's, it's kind of, doesn't sound like it's cutting really good because it's not. 10 strokes with fine rip cut. And now I think this is 17 teeth per inch. I think that's 20. Really won't make that big of a deal. You can just hear that cutting and we're probably three times as deep there do the ryoba do cross cut first there's 10 see it just goes to town <laughs> the right Tooth orientation, the right tooth cut is really, really important. We'll try the little tiny. 
super fine guy. Ten, and you know what? It's pretty much it's about the same depth, maybe a little bit deeper than the cross cut, which is a little bit more aggressive. So really, the tooth count doesn't matter much as far as depth goes. All right, now let's try cross cutting. Like I said, the rip cut cuts it pretty well, but it's just not as clean of a cut. So 10 strokes. And if you see this side, I'll, I will bring it over and I'll show you. 10 strokes with this, a finer tooth. <laughs> A little deeper and a really nice fine clean cut. This guy. Now compare that depth to and that depth 10 strokes with it going in the grain. So kind of get the idea why it's good to have the right saw. Bring it around this side. Well, actually, let's see here. Get us in line. So right now there's there's showing a little tear out, but watch if I just with my finger that goes away. And if you could come in here, so you can see that there's there's no like breakout at all on these ones. And on this one, there's little bits of broken out fibers just because it's a little little too aggressive and it just kind of breaks out on that side. Not a huge deal, but that's definitely better. <laughs> well, everyone, thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. I hope it'll help improve your woodworking. Like I mentioned before, there's links to all these saws down in the description. I also have a link to my website where I have a page that has all my other hand tool recommendations. And uh, Oots and I, we'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.